But as you can see, we have a special guest in the form of my brother Yassine. Mm -hmm. And I've mentioned this before, but Yassine is a professional sous chef and he's going to be cooking today with us a very, very special dish that I love when he cooks it. And we wanted to share it with you guys at home. And it is, what's it called? Katsu curry. Katsu curry. So yes, Yassine is going to tell you a little bit about himself, mm -hmm. his background, and then we're going to mm -hmm. get on with telling you guys exactly what you're going to need to make the most amazing curry. So, so yeah. I'm Yassine, Natasha's brother. 20 years old. Um, I've got three years cooking experience in two restaurants respectively. Currently at the Alchemist in Media City. So if any of you are around, come down man. Some good food. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, as I mentioned, we're going to be making katsu curry, which is a Japanese dish. Yep. Is it a popular dish? Very it? popular. Very popular. Um, you know, you can get it at your Wagamamas, you can get it at places like the Alchemist that we make it. Um, but also if you're like in Japan, ever, there's a lot of uh, katsu curries about with pork, chicken, veg. So you know it's. And would you say it's a good dish for this time of year, autumn, because of the warm Yeah, you know, it, I would describe it like a chip shop curry kind of thing. So like, food. yeah, like a lot more intensely flavoured uh, chip shop curry. So yeah. we're going to show you guys everything you need to prepare it. So I hope you all enjoy it. Pop any questions that you have been asking in the comments box down below, and I'll make sure he answers those for you or mm. tells me, and I can answer for you. But we're just going to get started. So to make this dish, we have a number of different ingredients, which are all going to be listed in the description box down below. But we have. Some honey here, salt and pepper of course, we also have a wash of egg and milk, we have a good olive oil, we also have panko breadcrumbs, now Yasin is going to talk to us in a minute all about why it's so important that we use panko breadcrumbs because the consistency is different, what they're made up of is quite different, so we'll move on to that in a second. Salt and pepper, some garam masala, curry powder, soy sauce, garlic, carrots, Obviously you're going to need whatever chicken you're using. We're going to be using this really lovely sized chicken breast which we're going to slice up in a moment. So, you know, chicken breasts are ideal as well for Weight Watchers because they're free. So it just makes it a low point value or as low as it can be when it's deep fried um, supper. We also have two nice sized onions here and some flour. The first thing we're going to start off with is chopping our vegetables. Now as you guys know, I'm not the best chopper in the world. <laughs> so I'm going to leave this to Yassine because he's going to tell us some techniques. And he's also going to explain to me why I always cry when I peel onions and what you can do to avoid it although I've been told there's not really much we can do. Uh, the best thing you can do is have a very sharp knife um, because if you're using a blunt knife you know you're kind of rubbing against the onion you know you're coming back and forth you're trying to break it down and as you push against the actual um, the walls of the onion it begins to get rid of the vapors that will make you cry. Another thing is uh, try not to slice your onion across this way. I would always tend to go this way because you keep the roots intact as much as possible um, and that is what causes you to cry the most. I think that's my issue. I always yeah. chop from the top. I recommend that you know you get to comfort with your chopping with a knife especially. So the front part of this blade here is always going to be on the board so it's going to be this motion. This part's never going to lift up it's just going to be the heel of the knife. And all you're going to do three fingers one in front two behind making sure that that finger is straight anything that's out like that is unfortunately going to get a little nick <laughs> it's gonna to get it chopped. so yeah basically if you keep it straight like this then you know the knife is just going to kind of glide against your your finger and your knuckle obviously it takes a while just go slow coming up and down up and down just like that the top of the blade against my board and just bring the back up coming against it, moving my hand gradually back. Um, and then it's just as thin as thick as you want. So that technique that you taught yeah, us, yeah, yeah. so is that about right? It's hard, it's harder than it looks. Yeah it is, you have to get used to it because your fingers aren't usually in that position. Next step is the garlic, very important in the most foods, it is the base. One thing about garlic, even if I'm ill, uh, what I'll do is I'll crush a piece just with my hand and I'll peel it and I'll let it sit for five, ten minutes and what it does is the garlic thinks that it's being eaten by a bug or 
um, a bacteria or something like that and it produces a chemical called allicin which is very good for you and I would just chew up the garlic and kind of breathe in the vapours and it will get your flu gone, it will get your... It cut. cleans your blood doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's very good for your blood. Um, obviously most people don't like chewing raw garlic but we are Arabic at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, no we're used to um, our garlic here. Yeah. But, so all I'm doing is I'm taking the thickest part of my blade which is the bottom and I'm just giving it a nice... And that's going to shatter the fibres yeah, and it's make just it more fragrant. So again, same with the onions. I'm just going to keep the, the tip of the blade on the board and just keep this. I'll slice all this and um, I'll just go over it again. I keep my hands, my forefingers on the front of the blade so it's ground and I'm just going to come. So what's the first thing that we need to do? Get some oil in the pan, I assume. Olive oil, and yep. then, Okay, olive oil. Um, I will just pass you the olive oil. Okay, oh. there you go. Let's just put this on. And what you'll find, guys, when you're doing this type of onion, you get this little brown stuff here. Um, and a lot of people think that's waste, um, but that's the best bit. In French, it's called fond, um, and it's just like the little crispy bits on the bottom of your pan. And if you ever hear anybody say like deglaze the pan, all that means is you're putting in a liquid, which allows you to get all this good stuff up, like which is stock. flavour. Of course, yeah. so the stock when we add it will deglaze our pan. So these onions are getting there now. There's just a few more that need to kind of break down. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the heat and add the carrots. You know, just gradually stir them and let them sit on a lower heat because they do take a lot longer than onions and like garlic to cook down. Um, so we're just going to gradually stir them and just let them cook in there for about 12 minutes. So, you know, this is the time where you know, you're cooking the carrots down 12 minutes, right? This is where, you know, you relax, you get yourself a glass of wine, put a little <laughs> bit of music on, you know, do whatever you do. Well, these go live on a Friday, so it'd be very fitting. Yeah, 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 end of, of End of week, supper. Yeah. And this is a great takeaway alternative, isn't it? One hundred percent. I mean, like you know, if you go into the the chippy, for example, it is literally a chip chop curry sauce. And what I like to do with it at the end, if I have any left over, I like to get some deep uh, ice trays, like really reduced for ice, some nice deep ones, and I put the sauce into there. Um, and if I go to the chippy, I wouldn't buy the sauce there. I would just come back, bang it in the microwave in a mug, and I've got my own. A very intensely flavoured chip shop curry. Okay, so now it's time to make our chicken stock. So I'm just using what I regularly use, which is a stock pot. You can go out and buy bags of stock you yep. can use. I'm assuming you can use a powder cube. You can use a powder cube, you can use your own stock if you've got chicken stock. I mean, even if you go to the most supermarkets these days, like a Sainsbury's and Asda, they yeah, all sell like, stock, yeah. they sell bags, they sell liquid. Um, but I like to use either a cube or one of these is perfect, you know. I like the stock pot. Yeah, yeah, I think that they, add, they melt better. Yeah, they do. You yeah. always find that when you use the cube, when I do use the cube from time to time, but you have to babysit them a little bit more. I'm going to make this stock now with mm -hmm. about 600 ml of boiling hot water. Mm -hmm. Stir it up, make sure that this is completely dissolved yep. in the water and then what's the next step? Please? And then um, the carrots are almost done, they're a couple minutes away so when we have the stock ready we're going to add the flour. So what we're going to do next is we've got the chicken stock nicely dissolved in here, it's very hot, it's boiling. Um, and we've got the flour and we're going to just sprinkle it evenly over everything. And we're going to turn the heat back up to a medium and we're just going to cook the flour down for a couple minutes. Um, it's important to cook your flour down because if you leave raw flour, it will lump in your sauce. So we're going to add the curry powder at this point as well. Uh, this is just a mild, medium curry powder. Important again to cook out your spices. That's how you get the flavour out of them the best. Okay, and slowly and gradually, we're going to add the chicken stock. And that's what you want to hear. You want to hear that sizzle. That means that the pan's nicely deglazing. I'm just going to stir it. If you did add all the chicken stock at once, you know, you can develop some lumps. So just take your time with it, little bit by little bit. Give it a nice stir. And then eventually we can just add the rest. So we're at this point, you know, where the stock had started to boil and the bottom of the pan's deglazed. We're just going to turn the heat down to the lowest we can go and let it simmer for, I'd say, 10, 8 to 10 minutes. Um, and all that's going to do is just make sure that we've got no lumps. It's going to make sure that all the bottom of the pan's deglazed. Um, and it's just going to make sure that we have a lovely, rich, intense sauce for the end. You know, when we're leaving it for eight minutes on a low simmer, it may seem like tedious and kind of like, you know, there's no reason for it. Um, but what it will do is it will get rid of a lot of the excess moisture um, and it will make the sauce 
thick because you know you don't want the sauce too and you don't want it too thick but and i think the fact that the sauce is quite a nice consistency that will complement the crunchiness yeah, of the well, chicken yeah that's the it? thing you know it's, it's, it's a contrast of, of course, the textures it's like crispy chicken that's like been really nicely cooked and it's juicy in the middle and you, know, you cut it up and you got it on top of your rice and you've got that warm sauce that kind of like hits the right spots as it goes through you like it, it it just hits those chakras you like this dish don't you i really do it honestly because it's the first dish that um is I, it got a special place in your heart yeah yeah of course if i ever had a restaurant if i ever had a, a, an event that i was catering anything like that this would definitely be up there because i know it's you made this on eid actually didn't I did, you i did yeah um i also made it for my mum's birthday because it's her favorite um but it's just, you know, a flavour that everyone's familiar with in the sense of chip shop curry and I'm a big fan of chip shops in general. Anything about them, um, I think they're one of the cornerstones of um Of, of British England. life, really. Of England, yeah. So, if we had vegetarians here, yes. tofu, could we... Tofu, yeah, I mean, you could put the tofu straight in there and let it cook through. Um, what I like to do for vegetarians, and something we do also at the place that I work, we do a cauliflower version, which is the same sauce, um, and what we do is we just take the cauliflower and we apply the same rules that we apply to the chicken and bread in it and we just fry it the same. That would be so nice. And it's lovely, yeah. So next you can add the soy sauce. We add the soy sauce because we've only seasoned the onions at the start to reduce the, um, the moisture of them. So the soy sauce will give it a nice rich dark colour. It will also give it a bit of saltiness. Also going in with the honey. The honey will help to make the sauce a little bit thicker and it also will counterbalance that warmth spice and make it a little bit sweeter. Um, and we're also just going to add a little pinch of black pepper. Just and is this to their liking? Or? This is of course, yeah, everything's to your liking. And then we're going to reduce it down to a simmer for another 10 minutes. Um, and then well, this is where you would add a bay leaf. Um, I forgot but, the bay leaf, guys. I'm just going to put it out there. Yeah, I forgot the bay um, leaf. You know, what? it's not a major part. It's just something that I like to do. Um, it just kind of gives it a nice throughout Mellow, flavour. I mean, yeah. if you have bay leaves, Feel free, if you don't, it's still going to be good, trust me. We brought it to a boil, uh, we've turned the heat down all the way. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to put the lid on and we're going to leave it slightly ajar. Um, and what it will do is let the steam escape so that um, the water doesn't, you know, drip back from the lid into the sauce. Because we've worked really hard to get that sauce nice and thick and that, that texture and that uh, consistency. So the last thing you want is for all this water from here to drip into that. So all I'm doing is I'm just whisking a single egg with a little splash of milk um, and this is what we call an egg wash um, It will just help the uh, the breadcrumbs to bind to the chicken um, The most important part of that is I think is the panko breadcrumbs uh, You can find these at Asda, Sainsbury's, Tesco And the difference between these and your normal breadcrumbs is that it's They call it a Japanese style But what it is is it's Japanese white bread that they bake they shred it and they let it dry out and what it does is it creates like these really irregular breadcrumbs that are nice and really rigid and sharp um, and they really stick onto the chicken and they get very very crispy when fried so i would recommend that any breadcrumbs you would use replace them with panko okay so the first thing we're going to do um it's quite a large chicken breast very nice chicken breast we're just going to take off the inner fillet which is this bit well the little bits of it that hang with the excess fat and we're just going to take them off you know you can keep the inner fillets for chicken nuggets like popcorn chicken they're great for that um, but we don't really need them and then when you've got your chicken breast you know nicely cleaned and stuff like this little bit of you know fat here we'll keep that little bit on all we want to do is hold the chicken and we want it to be about a centimetre a centimetre and a half thick just so it cooks really quickly stays nice and juicy stays nice and crispy now we're going to do is going to come with the heel of the knife and we're going to have one long stroke all the way through and that'll open the chicken up and just peel back and we're just pulling the blade pulling it pulling it and eventually you'll have a nice thin strip so now that we have our chicken cut and we've got our panne like breadcrumb flour and egg set up we're going to set it up so that the first thing we go into is the flour then the egg then the panko so to take one piece put it into the flour um, and then as it is you know you get the excess just give it a little little shake and that'll just kind of get the excess off you know you want it all the way covered like so it's quite silky yeah and then we're going straight into the egg and the milk and you know you want a thin coating not too much of this because you know you only need a little bit of stick and then straight into the breadcrumb 
and this breadcrumb you want to push it in so I would take my four fingers like this or your fist or whatever you like or your palm your hand and just really push it into there and what that'll do is it makes sure that all the breadcrumbs stay on it while it's frying so we've got it nicely coated you know there's no spots missing maybe that little bit there we'll get that in there my turn to have a go now so I'm gonna pick up the chicken and straight into the flour it feels so weird <laughs> it feels really satisfying yeah it though. is it's one of those Quite a fun activity. I'm gonna shake nice it up. little shake, tap, whatever you need to. Okay, straight into the egg wash. Mm -hmm. I got it everywhere. As you can see, guys, I am not a professional. <laughs> and then into. Yep. And you want to give it a nice crumbs. push in to the breadcrumb. Yeah, like that. Perfect. I'm just gonna make sure that everything's stuck in, nice. and that's a nice feeling. You it can is. feel the difference between those and normal breadcrumbs. They're a lot sharper, a yeah. lot more irregular. Okay, so I'm gonna go and wash my disgustingly mucky hands, but I'm assuming that now we're gonna move on to frying. Yeah. Is it time to fry? Yeah. Right, I'm gonna go wash my hands, I'll be back in a sec. Um, so we're gonna blitz the sauce. Um, you can do this with a blender, a food processor, a stick blender, whatever you have, just anything. Um, or, you know, if you don't have a blender, you can leave it like that and have the carrots and onions in it. But this way you wanna be really careful, um, because when you do put hot food into a food processor, they tend to shoot up. Please just watch your face, watch your hands, uh, watch anything that's important to you. Um, and then I'm just gonna... Okay, so we're kind of on the home stretch now, guys. The curry sauce is prepared, the chicken is ready to be fried. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we've spoken a lot through this. It won't take anywhere near as long as this video has taken, but it's just because we wanted to go through each step because as well as you guys learning this, I've learned this for the first time as well and I've learned loads today that I didn't know before. So, we're going to be on to frying the chicken now. So of course, you have your chicken in breadcrumbs, which we've already prepared. Add the oil. Now this might seem like a lot of oil guys, and it is, but you've got to remember that this is a deep fried chicken. Okay, so the oil is at a temperature that I like. It's not too hot, it's not too cold. I'm going to sh quickly show you the little water thing that I was explaining before. You just run your fingers under the tap and just kind of flick some water at it, instantly popped. Um, which means that the oil is ready. Obviously, please do not put a lot of water in because water and oil <laughs> will come. Not a good idea. No. Okay. So what you want to do is just lay it away from you. You always lay something away from you in oil because then it can never splash you towards you. Yeah. If you lay away, it's only going to splash away from you. I'm going to use the tongs because I'm a bit like. All right. Yeah. Do you want the third one in or is two enough for now? Yeah, we'll do two in a batch because you have to remember the more stuff you put into the oil, the longer the, it takes to cook. Because the oil cools down. So you can see, you know, the chicken cooks fairly quickly. It gets brown very quick. Um, the panko is much different to normal breadcrumbs um, in the sense that it gets super, super crisp. So we're just going to, because we're doing a shallow fry, not a deep fry, we're just going to keep turning. Leaving them, I would say, a thinner piece like this would probably take about two minutes, two minutes and a half. And it's thick, guys, so be careful. <laughs> and now what, we're just going to add the third piece? Yep. To yep, the third and the fourth piece just go straight in. Same way, lay them away. Perfect. Am I a good student? Very good, yeah. <laughs> you got a base knowledge that's great. Oh, yay! <laughs> that makes like my inner Hermione Granger very happy. <laughs> In any professional kitchen, we let meat rest, whether it be beef, um, you probably heard it with steaks before, you should always let your steaks rest. And the reason for that is because as you're cooking um, any meat, the juices go towards the outside. Um, and as you let them rest, all those juices come back in because they have no way to escape. Here, we're just frying off those off cuts of chicken um, for popcorn chicken for the kids because I feel like that'll be a nice little snack for them to have when they come home. Oh, this is just great for like dinner, guys, like with chips or mash and some veggies or some beans. I'm sure they would love that, so they'll be stoked that Uncle Yeti just made them then. So the chicken 
has all been cooked to perfection. It just smells so incredible, guys. I wish you could smell it. And now it is time to plate everything up and let everything come together. So we're on the home stretch now. Um, the popcorn chicken has also been done. I think the kids will be very happy yeah. when they come home. Um, so yeah, what is what is the next step? So now we're just going to literally plate everything now up. It's the just rice, the sauce. The rice, the sauce, the cutting okay. of the chicken. So this is the chicken, guys. As you can see, it just looks absolutely incredible. Crispy, golden. I can't wait to eat it. So, is there a method to stacking this? Um, um, well, what was off the plate I first? like to I like to go rice, chicken, sauce, and then whatever I'm on top. Okay. Um, what I like to do is I like to cut the chicken into um, like cubes, kind of. Oh, I would have thought you would have sliced it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna do that, but I'm also gonna slice it across and then across it again. I'm gonna hold the top and I'm gonna come down once, like a centimeter. I'm gonna come down. That smells down, so good. Down. I just want to eat it. Oh, yeah. and look, look at how crisp that is. Perfectly cooked. And I'm gonna down, down. So these would make a great salad dressing. Yeah, well, like salad they? toppings, or this is just, you know, like when you eat them with a spoon, you can just get rice, sauce, chicken, mm. easy. Very excited, guys. This cheeky one has already had a bit. We're <laughs> supposed to have it at the same time. Okay, so it's not, we're literally just going, oh, look, look, look at how white that chicken is, guys. And you can feel the juice, so you can feel it. It's taking everything, every fibre of me not to try this early, but I'm gonna wait until everything's been plated up. Mm -hmm. So, next step is to get the rice in the bowl. Rice in the bowl, chicken on top, sauce on top, good to go. And then we can give it a try, so mm -hmm. yeah, let's get packing. Cool. I'm just going to plate up a bit of the rice that we have. Again, feel free to use whatever accompaniment you would like, it doesn't have to be rice, but that is what we're using today, as is traditional with a katsu curry. And now it's time to add the chicken straight to the top. This looks so incredible, guys, honestly. Yeah. And then, and now is it a case of just leaving the sauce? The sauce off? Yep. I mean, doesn't that just look like heaven? Honestly. And that, my friends, is the finished bowl of chef graded <laughs> katsu curry. So, I think the, the first thing that we need to do is yeah. to give this a try. 100%. Are you going to give it a try? Yep, let's go. Go. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I am very rarely speechless at the end of these videos, but that, I mean, <laughs> seriously. Honestly, guys, I hope you've all enjoyed seeing mm. me and Yassine cook up this perfect and i i don't even say that lightly guys and it's not through me it's through this guy here but <laughs> this is the perfect combination of crisp of warming flavors of spice of complicated but flavors that even though complicated work together yeah, yeah. so so well so thank you so much for tuning in to join us today and thank you to this thank guy <laughs> for coming on and sharing his tips and his wisdom with us. If you would like to see Yassine feature more in these cook along with me, do let me know. Comment down below. Let him know what an amazing job he did, guys. I honestly thought this guy should be in teaching. <laughs> I learned so much today. I'm sure you guys did too. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the description box for the recipes and, you know, where you can go check out Yassine's mm -hmm. restaurant that he works at. If you yep. want to maybe say hi. Um, Any questions, put them in the comments. I'll be sure to answer them. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Happy cooking. Of course, if you do recreate this, make sure you use the hashtag cook with mm -hmm. Sasha Summer so I can see it and give you a shout out in my next video. But for now, yep. we're going to say goodbye. So thank you so much, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. You have to try it. You have to try it. delicious, man. Language, Jesse. Good? Mm. Are you gonna leave me for my brother? Mm. We're not more fun. <laughs> <laughs> the cooking, ugh! The cooking, the chicken! Oh, what? Oh, is it recording? Yes, recording. Okay.